Imagine you're an electrical engineer at a manufacturing facility. You've been asked to analyze a single-phase load that's drawing 50 amperes at 230 volts with an active power consumption of 9.2 kilowatts. Your task is to determine three crucial parameters, the apparent power, power factor, and phase angle. Let's start by organizing our known values. Current is 50 amperes, voltage is 230 volts, and active power is 9.2 kilowatts. First, let's calculate the apparent power. Remember, this represents the total power delivered to our load, found by multiplying voltage and current. Voltage is 230 and current is 50, which gives us 11,500 volt amperes, which is 11.5 kilovolt amperes. This reveals something interesting. While our load consumes 9.2 kilowatts of active power, it actually draws 11.5 kVA from the supply. What causes this difference? This brings us to our next calculation. Let's determine the power factor, our key efficiency indicator. We find this by dividing active power by apparent power. Active power is 9.2 kilowatts, and apparent power is 11.5 kilovolt amperes. We get the power factor 0.8. This 0.8 power factor tells us something crucial. Only 80% of the power delivered to our system is doing useful work. The remaining 20% is handling the reactive components in our circuit. We can draw the power triangle for this system. Finally, let's calculate the phase angle, which shows us the time displacement between voltage and current waveforms. Power factor is the cosine of the phase angle. Since we know the power factor, we can find the phase angle using the inverse cosine of our power factor. Phase angle is 36.87 degrees. What does all this mean for our facility? While a power factor of 0.8 isn't terrible, it suggests there's definite room for improvement. By implementing power factor correction, we could bring this value closer to 1.0, reducing our apparent power draw and ultimately lowering electricity costs.